Hi, Hi everyone. How, How is, is everybody this Friday? Friday? It, it is August 6th, 2021. 2021. Let's see, Kelly is saying, if asking if I remember my oversized see-through snowman gift tags from November 2017. Yes, yes I, do. I do, with Mama, Mama Elephant, Elephant, right? Yes. yes. Oh, oh, you're, you're working, working on those. those. That, that is so awesome. awesome. Oh, oh my gosh, you're making 25. That is incredible. Hello, everybody. Let's make that disappear. Oh, thank you, Linda, for loving my live segments. I was looking forward to this. Um, thank you guys for letting me switch to... Oh, Kelly, there's a... Yeah, I see why there is a echo. Let me see. Is that fixed? Please let me know. I thought I muted it. I did click it before we went live, but it has a mind of its own. Tell me if it's echoing now. Oh, it's still echoing. Let me see. Oh gosh, it's still echoing. That stinks. Okay, let me switch something. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh good, it's fixed. Everybody can hear it? Rebecca says yes. Kelly says yes. Is it bet? Oh, lots of fixed. Okay, so I think we are fixed. This is not usually what I like to use, but I do not want an echo, that ruins everything. Okay, so back to what I was saying. Thank you guys for um, letting me um, switch to tonight. I need to get my hair done. <laughs> um, I actually had rescheduled it because I need to do something with my son when I really had my appointment, and this was the only time she could do it. So thank you guys for letting me switch to tonight, which hopefully maybe let some of you who don't always get to come join us for a little Halloween crafting. Um, I love Halloween, so this was really fun. This was an awesome request. This was direct from last week's live stream. I had some requests for Magic Iris and from Lawn Fawn, the Magic Iris Interactive, and for Halloween, and I thought let's combine the two. I will tell you, originally when I posted the, the live stream link, I said I was going to share some other cards, and I'm not going to, and that's because um, this week, brand new Lawn Fawn Holiday showed up, and I want to wait to show you the brand new. Um, so if that gives you a little hint of what there might be coming, so um, I'm going to hold off on that, and I'm actually going to show those a little bit later. I don't think this, it won't come this month, that releases in September, except I was going to say stamp timber because I don't say September anymore. I say stamp timber. It's crazy. So not only did new lawn fawn show up this week, but stamp timber's in the house. So um, I'm so excited, you guys. It's going to be wild and crazy crafting going on um, probably for the next mm, seven weeks or so. Um, hello, hello. I know I haven't even got to say hi to everyone. I love seeing everyone here and from all over. It is so uh, nice to see you. If this is your first time joining us in a live, please drop a one in the chat. Um, let us know. I love seeing who all's new. If you are watching the replay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining and watching the replay. I appreciate you guys so much. I know it's really hard to catch lives. Um, I do the same thing with my favorite content creators. I usually, I can't watch them in real time, so I watch them later. So I appreciate my replay crew as well. Um, let's see, I have maybe a couple more things to tell you. Oh, office update. My son and I are going to Ikea on Sunday. Um, Diane's a one, hello, yay, that's so exciting. Julie's a one as well. Um, Cindy is a one. Oh, this is so much fun. Thank you guys. I have so many ones tonight. This is exciting. Um, so my office update, I know some of you are eagerly waiting. Um, I think, Linda, isn't it you who usually say you'll come and take me if I don't get it done pretty soon? Um, 
I'm going Sunday. It's a quick thing to build, so I'll probably have it built in no time and put up. I'm hoping to do all the filming and everything next week and have that up. I already have a lot of content for next week, so I think I should have enough time to get the office stuff all done. So, yay! I'm excited. Um, next week, I have a new Making the Cut video for Simon Says Stamp. And I know there's some... Oh! Lawn Fawn next week. So we're doing Lawn Fawn tonight. I wanted to make mention really quick. If you follow Lawn Fawn and follow the Lawn Fawn blog, they are doing uh, favorites. Next week, it, their inspiration week is going to be all about favorites. And I think I've got makeup everywhere. Sorry. Um, so all the designers are just doing favorite cards. It's really hard for me to pick favorites because I love Lawn Fawn and I love everything about Lawn Fawn. So I just picked some fun things. I actually picked something I haven't crafted with before and paired it with a bunch of stuff I love. Um, and so that will be Friday. So those are two kind of fun things coming next week. And then I do want to tell you Hero Arts Holiday Release drops the 18th. So get ready because it is fantastic. I'm real excited about that too. All right, let's get crafting. I'm going to switch my camera. And if you guys have questions, definitely uh, throw them in the chat. I will try to periodically check and hopefully I don't miss them. If I do, ask again. Um, and we are going to get crafting. Let's see. Okay. So I did do a little bit off camera. I actually did quite a bit off camera. But I'm going to recreate all of this here. I only did it off camera because I wanted it to be completely dry. Yes, Hun Bun 100. I am for sure checking the inventory before I leave. I have learned that the hard way. So the goal is to get what I need on Sunday, but, you know, we'll see. Yes, I bet the Ikeas are crazy. Yes. Okay, so, yes, I pre-planned quite a lot. Partly, I did all of this ahead of time, but we will recreate this. This is going to be the first thing we do. I needed it to be all the way dry for video purposes and to save you guys some time. And I don't personally like to heat this up because it warps the paper. I like it to air dry. So this was all done earlier this week. So there's that. Um, we're going to do our ghost on camera. I did do a few little um, images that I colored off camera. We're not doing a ton of coloring. I did real-time coloring last week, so we're not going to do that. We're going to focus mainly on building the magic iris because I know it's super intimidating. You get this set and you're like, what in the world do you do with that? So it's kind of crazy. There are a lot of pieces, but I promise you that after you have put one together, it really becomes easy. So I know I gave a little teaser in my intro there, but this I'm going to go through what magic iris products there are so far. Um, and just an FYI, there's going to be some new add-ons, and I'm excited. Okay, so this is the Magic Iris. This is really all you actually need to create a Magic Iris card. And wow, are we lagging already. My son is probably playing video games, which, I, uh, you know, is what it is. It's Friday night. Um, this is what you need. And you're going to need this for anything you create with Magic Iris. The add-ons just kind of work with this. So this is the main die set. Now this is what we're actually using to create the crystal ball tonight, but it's a snow globe and I love it. I've used the snow globe before. I made car or tags rather with it last year. It's super cute and obviously as snowflakes we're not using. We're actually only going to use this piece and then the pieces to kind of create the bottom of where the crystal ball sits. So think outside the box. It doesn't always have to be exactly what it is um, intended for. Stephanie is asking my 10. It is small. Um, so see, it it's only fits six. It would fit six standard size cupcakes. Hold on, I'm going to lift it up and see. It doesn't say who made this, um, but I'm pretty sure that this is from... I want to say we are memory keepers from years ago. Um, I've had it forever. I actually unearthed it from a box, and it just works really well to organize, especially for a live stream. Yeah, Cindy, we are freeze. I'm freezing here too. I'm so sorry that it's doing that. 
Okay, let me see if I've missed anything so far. Oh, Jen says she's excited. Yay! Oh, good! Tracy, you found the memory box mitten die. I am excited. That is awesome! Because I noticed it sold out, and I've been kind of trying to keep an eye on it, but um, if I find it again, I will let you know. Okay, I'm going to come down here a little bit. Oh my gosh, I have some crazy comment in here. That's okay. Um, so we have the snow, or the, yeah, the snow globe. We're going to make it a crystal ball. Yeah, I see that. I wonder how we get rid of that. Hmm. On my end. Oh well. Okay. We're going to ignore it for now. Yeah, I would like to block, but I am not exactly sure how to. Okay. Oh, thank you for reporting. You guys are awesome. Okay, back to all the different add-ons. That kind of distracted me. I apologize. There is the camera add-on. So this is really cute because it makes it look like it's the shutters, you know, opening and closing. I've done some cards with this before. It's really adorable. Um, with the camera, you can also not use it as the magic iris, and you can instead make it look like a camera pull tab. So I just pulled that out, too, since that is another option. Magic iris birdhouse add-on. This is awesome, awesome. Thank you guys for reporting. I really appreciate it. Um... I did some cards with this as well. I need to remember to maybe link to some of my other card videos down below. Um, oh, I wanted to mention that too. I already preloaded the supplies tonight. I preloaded the marker colors I use since I'm not coloring on camera. Um, I think that's about it. But I will put links to any of the other Magic Iris cards I've done previously. This is super popular though, the Birdhouse is Darling. And remember, any of these can be used without the Magic Iris. This is a simple one, but so cute. It is the Thought Bubble. This is probably my most often used one. It is the big, like, um, slightly smaller than A2 size panel, so it really kind of covers the whole thing. It's super, super um, versatile and like I said my most often used and then this is the most recent one from that's been released so far and this is the tropical leaves which is so cool and it was part of their uh, most recent release which had a lot of tropical vibes to it so really cute so you can see that if you invest in the initial investment, you can do a lot of different things, which I love. Personally, I love. I love that Lawn Fawn keeps coming out with incredible products to do some really fun things with and that you don't have to buy a whole new interactive set. Uh, Tracy says birdhouses and gnomes are her weakness. Yes, me too. Oh, good. Linda Garnett is from British Columbia, Canada, and she says the echo's gone. Good to know. Um, created by Zoe says, don't forget the thumbs up. Thank you so much. Yes, please remember to like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. Um, let me see. Okay, I want to talk about everything you need for the Magic Iris. This ring here you need three of those. So you will die cut, whatever cardstock you choose, you will die cut three of those. From one of the circles, you will use this funny shape here. Let me pull all these out. So this is the circle. This is the funny shape that you'll then take and you just kind of line it up here and run it through your die cutting machine and you end up with this piece which gives guides, which are really handy. And then these little tabs, which is where the actual magic iris fits. And then these are the magic iris pieces. So you need to die cut three of these. And you'll notice it has a little X. That is where the adhesive goes. So these all fit into this like so. 
And you can, of course, decorate them any way you want. We're going to decorate ours to fit the same theme as our crystal ball. And then, so that's this piece. Then you have this little piece here. That's the handle that you pull and move, the recipient pulls and moves. So I've got that. And then these, you need three of these little tabs here, which is this guy. And then, and I can't believe I forgot to do this, but that's the way it goes. I forgot to cut, die cut my decorative piece. This just makes the little tab here so much snazzier. So that's what we're going to be doing. We'll, we'll die cut something when we get to that. That always comes after the assembly. So that's the magic iris. I am going to move that out of the way for now. I've also already die cut obviously everything and we are going to start kind of inking everything. I'm going to move most of this out of the way for now. We are going to start with our background. I'll show you what we're doing. Oh Val, you haven't missed anything. Hello everybody, everyone who's just joined us. Okay, I don't think I've missed any questions yet. Oh good, Linda Garnett is a one. Perfect. Welcome everyone. So this is the background. I want it to obviously look kind of spooky. It's, Halloween. it's a Halloween card. So I have some Simon Says Stamp Slate Gray cardstock. And we're going to take the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil and create some clouds with white pigment ink. So let me see. I love our Lawn Fawn Yeti ink. And I am just going to take a blending brush. You can use whatever kind of blending brush you want here. And I'm going to start at the top. I don't know. Have you guys seen the Lawn Fawn stencils or have them? They have these grids, which I totally love. I wish that more companies had them because you can kind of line them up. I'm not totally going to use them this way tonight, but it does kind of help start because you can line up like one grid all the way down one side if you want. So we're just going to start here. Hello. Hi, uh, Bearcat54. You have not really missed anything. So welcome. If you're just joining, welcome. We're just now starting to create. I was long-winded tonight, I guess. Yeah, more people. What's, what is the size of the sheet? The cardstock is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So this is A2 sized. I hope that's the right question. I answered the right question. Annie loves card making. If not, tell me that that wasn't right. Because <laughs> that can happen. Let me see. Oh, Tina, you love this stencil. Yes, I use it all of the time. So I kind of start on this stencil and then just work my way up. What I love about stenciling with white pigment ink on a dark cardstock is you automatically get that kind of spooky vibe. So I think that's great. And you'll notice that I tilted my stencil a little bit for that second row. Um, we're going to do that a bit. I'm not going to go straight across. I want them to kind of be every which way. I know a lot of this will get covered up with the crystal ball, but to me, this completes the scene a lot by having um, something going on in the background. I have a really hard time keeping a background plain or just solid. I shouldn't say plain, solid. I always like to have something going on. So just adding, we're going to do this all the way down and then we're going to ink up our crystal ball and then we'll put together our magic iris. So this is a magic iris tutorial, basically, but we're going to do the whole card. I mean, we have to do the whole thing, right? What is everyone's plans this weekend while I'm doing my little bit of inking here? I would love to hear. I don't have a ton of downtime this weekend, which I kind of hate, but that's okay. Got lots and lots of stuff to do. But I'd love to hear what everyone's plans are this weekend. If you're crafting, nope, not that one. Yeah, I think we'll do this. Tina, you like the effect. Me too. 
Okay, so generally, then I just kind of go down here along the bottom, because I kind of don't like what I did there, but, and we're just gonna make that a little lighter, blend it all in, and there's our spooky background. So easy, and you're instantly done. So a dark cardstock is so great. Black would also work. I just kind of went with gray because I, I really like gray, and lately I've been using gray a ton. All right, I'm going to set that to the side to dry, and I'm going to grab a rag to clean up this ink real quick so we don't get it all over everything. Plan, okay, let's see, Christmas cards, Spellbinders July card kit came. Oh, how awesome! Catch up on study. Oh no, Jen, you broke your toe. Shoot. Annie loves card making, wants to know if I prefer brushes over Tim Holtz blenders. Um, you know what? I do. I, I still use both, but I usually use the blenders. Or the brushes, pardon me. Oh, Tina, uh, Pierce Tinney, school shopping for your little guy. I need to so bad. Uh, is it Nidra or Nedra is crafting? Please tell me how you pronounce your name. I hate getting it wrong. Krista's working on Christmas cards. Oh, Beatrice, your birthday's Sunday. Happy early birthday. Nancy, I'm working all weekend too. I mean, granted, it's making cards, but this isn't really what I wanted to do all weekend. Uh, Saturday is cleaning day. Oh, yes, me too. Back to school shopping. Oh, my gosh, lots of that. Oh, and Jenny has a birthday tomorrow, too. Happy birthday. Lots of birthdays. Oh, yes, watch Tim Holt Saturday for sure. Let's see. Okay. I think I have caught up on most of it. So let's grab our crystal ball and I'm gonna put this, let's move my sentiments and my ghost. This is what our goal is. And I know it looks messy, but I didn't bother inking up these pieces because there's little dies that cover these up. And I die cut these from holographic cardstock because, well, I thought it looked magical and spooky. So that's kind of what we're gonna do here. So what I'm gonna do is grab some sort of masking. You can just use a post-it note or whatever. I'm just gonna use post-it tape because I have it handy and I love it. And it also kind of helps hold that down um, Cindy, I want to say Tim is usually at a noon Eastern, I think, but I'm not for sure about that. If anyone knows, can you please drop a note? I meant to make a note of that and I completely forgot. Oh, Rebecca, you're sewing outfits for your granddaughter's birthday. That is so cool. All right. Three colors of Distress Oxide ink that we're using tonight. This is probably one of my all-time favorite color combos, which is Shaded, Lilac, and Blueprint Sketch. We're going to start with our lightest color and pretty much color the entire crystal ball with it. So I'm just going to ink that up really good. And I you, I should have made mention. So this die cuts, the center die cuts out. I temporarily taped it here just for now because we're going to use that piece. And I almost always use that piece, so I almost always do this exact thing when I'm customizing with ink. And we're just gonna give it a nice, good coverage with shaded lilac. Julie wants to know the holographic paper, which paper is my favorite. Um, the holographic paper I'm using here, hmm, I suppose I didn't write it down. I'm almost positive. Oh gosh, that was scratchy. Sorry guys. Uh, I think this is the Lawn Fawn holographic one. I'm almost certain. In fact, I think I may have linked to the wrong one, but I this is the Lawn Fawn. But I also have Simon holographic paper. They all have a little bit different pattern. I thought this one was really fun. 
All right, after we have shaded lilac, we are gonna take a blueprint sketch. Jane wants to know what my favorite holiday, holiday is to make cards for Christmas. S definitely Christmas. Michelle says noon Eastern for Tim Holtz. Thank you so much, Michelle. Yes. So for me, if you're in central time like I am, that is 11 and then nine Pacific. Please correct me if I'm wrong, I'm terrible with time zones. Okay, I'm not completely inking with Blueprint Sketch now. I'm just kind of making, I wanted to have that kind of magical feel where there's some light areas. So yes, a lot of the shaded lilac is getting covered, but not all. We wanna leave some of those fun little light, light-ish areas there. And then for the most dramatic effect, we are going to do black. So I know I answered, I love making them for Christmas, and this is true. Um, Christmas is my favorite to decorate for, but Halloween is a close second. I love decorating, fall decorating. I shouldn't just say Halloween. I do like decorating for Halloween, but I love fall, and I love decorating for fall. So see how this looks kind of messy? Now we need to go back, and I'm going to take my blueprint sketch and kind of go over these dark areas. I don't want to completely blend over blend because I don't want to lose all the light purple. But I want it to have that mist kind of cool look. So let's, that was a harsh line. Okay, that looks pretty good. We're not going for perfection. We just want it to be kind of inky. So then I'm going to take, you just need a water tool of some sort. Um, I'm using the Distress Sprayer. You can see mine is well loved. It's discolored. I don't know why because the water is not colored. But it's inky and splattered and it's kind of a mess. So we are just going to kind of go over it like so. And then I just kind of blot and look at those awesome oxidation marks. I love them. Gosh, it just keeps pausing. Okay, so that looks great. We are going to then just remove our post-it notes. And the bottom is white, which I definitely don't want for a Halloween card. And we're just going to ink it up with a black soot like this. So I'm going to move my post-it tape. We're just going to reuse it. We're going to go back with our black soot and we're going to ink it up. Now, the reason I did these off camera this earlier this week and let them air dry, I want to stamp and emboss on this. And if you go and stamp and emboss right away with the Distress Oxide ink especially, it stays wet for a while. It has pigment in it. You would either need to dry it with a heat tool or you need to let it air dry, which is what I did. Otherwise, your embossing powder is going to stick everywhere and you will be angry. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I have done that so many times. Oh, Linda, you said yours is discolored too. That is so crazy. Okay. Jesse wants to know if I know right away when looking at a stamp set what I'm going to do. No, I don't always. Sometimes I do. Oh my gosh, and I'm going to tell you right now, the new Lawn Fawn release, I already have so many ideas. Oh, I missed a corner. I'm, so sometimes, yes. If something super speaks to me, I will instantly have an idea, but not always. Um, in fact, most of the time, no. I like to sit with new stamps a little bit and... Get an idea for what I want to do. Okay, so I know this looks terrible, but that is totally fine. Now, I'm going to set this one aside, and we're going to pretend this is completely dry. Ta-da! <laughs> this one is all the way dry. And we're going to grab our embossing ink, a misty, and some white embossing powder. Hi, Therese! And we are going to add our sentiments. And I want to do this before I add any of the embellishments. So that great holographic paper, all of that. And I want to do two different things here. So I'm going to get this right where I want it to go. 
We're going to do You Are Spooktacular. This is from, I'll have to look for sure. And I'm just going to line it up to begin with. And then we'll adjust it from there. Let me look. I wanted to say exactly, let me move things we've used out of the way. So, You Are Sp Spooktacular is from the Spooktacular Stamp and Die Set. Guys, I've had this for... I don't know. It's been out a long, long time. I know because my label is old, my old style of labels. And then I have a label that's even older, which I thought was funny. I've never replaced it. It's this one. So these are the two oldest. I kind of pulled some old and some kind of newer ones. So that's where you are spooktaculars from. And then the cute little tiny Halloween. We're going to have, have a fabulous day. And what we want to do is we want to round this around the opening and so I'm going to line it up straight first and then we'll fiddle with it a little bit. This is how we're going to do it tonight. I don't always do it this way but we're going to kind of actually wonder we're going to do this. So it should be about like so. I'm using this circle as a guide to kind of bend my greeting. I really didn't plan this very good ahead of time. And let's just kind of see how that... Okay, this one needs to be a little bit more... I usually just fuss with it. I know that there's easier ways to do this and actually that is not. Let's do this. I'm not loving that. The thing with doing this curved is I generally mess with it forever and I don't want to do that tonight. But that looks a little bit better. Oh, actually that looks pretty good. So we are going to stamp these at the very same time. Julie said, okay, let me see. Julie says, do you write your ideas down when they come to you for future reference or do you just stick in your head? Um, I have sticky notes and little lists everywhere, Julie. <laughs> uh, Linda wants to know if I will be at Simon Says Stamp Create next April. Um, I don't have plans right now to, but... Um, I will let you know if that changes. Paula wants to know how do I keep track of what stamps and dies I own. I wish I could tell you I had some high-tech uh, way, but I, I don't. I, I keep mine by um, company, and then I then sort them by season or occasion within that company. Tina Pike wants to know how I get past a creative block. I go do something else for a while, um, or I clean. Cleaning my my studio always gets me um, motivated. And Mary wants to know about the new Lawn Fawn release. I'm talking about the new holiday Lawn Fawn. You have not seen it yet, so you have not missed anything. Um, that will be released in September. Okay, so we're stamping on dark. I do this pretty much every time anyway, but sometimes I forget. We're going to use a little powder tool. I do not want stray, ugly little white flakes everywhere. So we're just going to be generous with our powder tool. And then I've got the Lawn Fawn embossing and watermark. Linda, are you talking about, she says maybe you can show us sometime, are you talking about how I uh, store my stamps? Because that will be in my office video for sure. I know that's probably one of the things people want to know the most um, is how how designers store their product because I know everyone stores it differently. I often work within a certain company and so that's how I store them but I will be showing you guys that detailed. So I stamped it twice and I think I don't need that so let's move that out of the way. Yes, Tina, it will be a total tour. I'm hoping to film it next week. Um, the only reason I, 
I wouldn't get it at least filmed next week is if the product I want is not in stock to finish my office. And then white embossing powder. I know I mention this all the time, but white is my favorite. I use white 90, I want to say 99% of the time, but maybe I should say 98% of the time. All right, we are going to heat this up. I'm going to let that warm up for just a second. I am going to show you something with that embossing powder before I put it completely away. I totally love that Lawn Fawn, you can use stuff from 8, 10, I don't know how many years ago some of this stuff came out, and then stuff that's recent, and it all goes together. It's probably my favorite, favorite thing about Lawn Fawn. I know I mention this a lot in my videos, but I think it's just so genius. And there is our crystal ball. How cute is that? I'm loving it. Okay, I want to show you this before I put my... Um, embossing powder away. So the reason I let my crystal ball dry all the way, I'm going to bet this one is still pretty wet. Yeah, eh, it's not too bad. Um, actually, it's dried a lot quicker than I thought, but you'll get, see, you get your embossing powder that sticks to everything. That's how you know that it's not safe to stamp. I want to save this because I think I'll make two car of these cards. So we're just going to take a paintbrush and clean that up. So that's a little test. If you're ever wondering if your piece is ready to be stamped on, you can always just sprinkle on some embossing powder without stamping and give it a little check. All right, let's see if I missed anything. <laughs> Linda says she wants to see every detail. She doesn't care if it's two hours long. Okay, I do, because I am so super afraid of how much editing that's going to be. <laughs> but yes, it probably will be a little bit long. Okay. Um, Krista Beard wants to know, do you use the glow-in-the-dark embossing powder? I do, and at Halloween only, usually. And I have a great idea with something that is coming next month that I will... Be using it on hopefully I don't want to promise in case I change my mind but I definitely want to use that I have a really one of the new products for September I think needs it all right so we have our crystal ball done so I'm gonna go ahead and add this decoration real quick and then we're gonna assemble the magic iris so the longer piece goes along the bottom And the shorter piece goes right here, and that covers up that ugly inked border just perfect. And there's our crystal ball. Alrighty. Real quick, I am go also going to go ahead and pop this center out now. Because I don't need it to be stuck there anymore. I'm going to figure out... Carol wants to know who makes the glow-in-the-dark embossing. Lawn Fawn for sure makes one. I think there are some others. The Incan Garden Spot says she can't wait for the office tour and loves them doing a Halloween card. She loves Halloween. Me too. Jesse B wants to know, do ideas come easy because you're so creative? Okay, <sighs> sometimes. Like, this idea came to me, and I literally had it all planned really quick. Oh, you know what I forgot to do, guys? But sometimes they don't. I forgot to buff away um, my powder tool, so I'm going to do that real quick. I'm just using a dry microfiber cloth. You can use your finger, a Swiffer, whatever. I'm using my Magic Iris now. I want to put my background directly on my card. So I want to figure out where it's going to finish. And I'm just going to kind of even put it even. I'm going to put some adhesive down. And we're going to just pop that right in place. And I did try to line it up where, you know, it's pretty close. And we're going to take this off. Magic iris time. 
Okay, I did not ink these because I don't really think I need to. <laughs> these are the three pieces that go in there. I did these just like I did everything else off camera, but I inked them very much like the crystal ball that I inked. So I just thought I'd save some time and not ink those here today because now they're completely dry. So we are going to take this piece and we are going to slip them in. And what you want to do is you want this inside curve to line up with the curves on the inside and outside. So I know it looks a little funny, but I promise it'll get better. So part of the other reason I wanted these inked pieces to completely dry, I have found that it is hard to get your little mini glue dots to stick here if you um, don't. In fact, I'm really hoping they stick good tonight because otherwise I may have to mute what I say. No, I'm kidding. So I'm going to take that and we're just going to put a little mini glue dot. Oh, that worked so good. Definitely letting things air dry, you guys, works so much better than trying to do it right away. So you want to put a little micro mini glue dot on each of those little X's. So there is that, and then, and I know they've shifted, but I haven't glued anything down yet, so we're good. All right, so there is those little glue dots. Now I want to reline this up and just kind of hold it in place. They kind of naturally fall where they're supposed to go. And we are, ah, oh, dang it, there we go. Stay put. We're going to take this and pop it right on top. And you can kind of fiddle with it. I promise it's not that hard. All right, there we go. <laughs> Tina says she loves those glue dots but end up with them everywhere. Girl, you and me both. Andrea Sanders is a one. Thank you. I'm so glad you're joining us. Kathy Akers, no worries. I'm glad you're here. Maureen, I'm glad you're here too. Awesome. Okay, so we have our little sandwich. Now I'm going to flip it over. And remember I was talking about those little uh, stitched lines. So I like to use double-sided adhesive not liquid adhesive. So what I like to do is put my adhesive right here. This is just some double-sided adhesive tape. It's my new bracelet. I use my adhesive tape as a bracelet. And we're just going to stick those down and then peel them away. And then these little guys are what go around these. So I'm just going to put them on the back side first before we ever attach anything on the front. Because we have one more thing to do before we do before we do that. I know there's a lot of little pieces and I I will tell you, I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm always really slow to like jump on the bandwagon. So when this first came, I was already a huge Reveal Wheel fan. I was like, the Reveal Wheel is the best thing ever. I love it so much. I'm not doing that magic iris. I mean, I don't probably think it quite like that, but you know what I mean. I was like, oh, it looks so hard. And I had to watch Kelly Marie's video that she did for us a million times. And I'm like, really? No, I'm not going to like this. I don't want to do this. And then what do you know? I absolutely love it. So I should really stop doing that because I end up loving it. We're going to now put the pull tab mechanism. I'm going to put some adhesive on that as well. And then let's go ahead and put a little adhesive on the tabs. I flipped it over. I'm not going to pull the backing paper off. 
Sue is a number one. Yay! And Paulette, hello! We've got a bunch of people joining. Maureen, you're making me laugh. Yes, that is so funny. Jesse is a one. Oh, awesome! I love seeing all these ones tonight. So, okay. We have one layer, the little colorful layers, the ones that move, a solid circle, and then we want to write to the right of this one of these, you can pick whichever one you want, is where we want to put our little lever. So I am going to do this. And we are going to just kind of, you really want to just line up that curved edge with the inside curved edge and you want it to be just to the right. Then we're going to take our last little donut and it's going to go here on top. And before I do anything, I generally kind of like to, yeah, I think that's going to work good. All right, double check. All right, we're going to peel off these. Alonda, hi from Denver. You're not too far from me. Thank you. And then we're just peeling off the backing paper. I use my tweezers because I find it's easier. But Now these are not going to go all the way into the circle. You just kind of want to try to get close to that stitched line. And this holds, these little tabs here hold it all together. Then you want to make sure that it works. And it's not stuck down yet, so you know, it can be a little bit, well mine's sticking, so this is a good time to figure out why. Might be my handle. Hold please. <laughs> oh, there we go. I just need to hold it on the outer circle. Okay, yes, the lever from heavier cardstock. This is a 110 pound weight cardstock. We are going to die cut the little decorative lever. I forgot to do it ahead of time. But I find the more you guys can do this before you put it together, the easier the mechanism works when you actually have it on your card. So that is just my little tip for the day. So we are going to take this then. Let's take all of our pieces because we're about to the part where we just get to do the fun part. And we want to figure out where this is going to go. I don't want to attach anything yet. And there is a little trick to attaching. So when you want to close it because you want to figure out, I probably should have done these tabs out of black cardstock as I look at it now, but that's okay. So you want the lever to be somewhere within your card frame so it's not sticking out like this and you won't go in your envelope. So I always kind of shut it and give it, figure it out where it's going to go and just play with it a little bit. Now you can put adhesive all over the front of this and attach this. So I am going to do that really quick. I'm just going to open it for a minute. And I put strong adhesive and a lot because I want it to stay put. So we kind of want it about like that, I think. And I'm just going to line up my crystal ball with the circle and press that down. Now, see the little highlight area here that didn't die cut? I actually meant to die cut that from holographic cardstock and I forgot, so we're going to do that too in a little bit too. Then we can open it up. And here's what it looks like. So this is what it's going to look like on the card when open. We're going to do some decorating before we attach this. When you attach this, you only want to put adhesive on these little tabs, the ones that we wrapped around. Otherwise, it's not going to move correctly. So adhesive here. And then because this is thick, we have all of those layers of cardstock, I put foam adhesive here so that it's nice and flat. And we'll do that here in a minute. All right, let me see if I've missed anything. 
A little magic powder can loosen it up. Kelly says, yes, absolutely. Rebecca, making the donut, I have to tell you, I had just a tiny heart attack thinking, great, I probably put it together wrong on camera. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Jesse, thank you so much. Does the lever, I already answered that one. Okay, I think I'm pretty well caught up. Oops. So let me kind of clean up a tiny bit of trash. And I want to show, I actually wanted to do this on camera because I was pretty excited. I'm going to put it on the dark cardstock so it's easy to see. So I wanted ghosts and I love ghosts out of vellum. I think if you're going to do the ghosts, vellum is the way to go because it, it's just so much fun. So I got three of these little guys, but what I did is I did something a little different. I can't remember. Oh yeah, this one's I think going to come there. Anyway, we can play around with placement. But the things I don't like, I stamp them with white and emboss a lot. And yesterday I had the crazy, and um, let's crazy, it's not crazy, idea of stamping them with white stays on so I don't have to heat emboss and I don't warp the vellum. And I am in love with it. But I also have the idea of let's change their face. This ghost is this ghost. I changed his face because you know Lawn Fawn has faces for everything. So I actually changed his face to this right here and I loved, loved, loved it. Um, this guy is also from the Happy Haunting stamp set. I also changed his face to these kind of like little side eyes which I thought was hilarious. Um, that is from the Tiny Halloween. So see, these are a lot smaller. I mean, a couple of them are a little bit more creepy, but I did like the little side eye. And then this ghost is from the Spooktacular set. And I mean, his face is really cute, but I was having so much fun altering their faces that I took the little creepy eyes from here and did that instead. So I'm going to show you how I did that because it's actually really easy. Let me grab my vellum and my misty. And some extra stuff that came out of my drawer. All right. This is just a scrap of vellum. In fact, I've die cut a snowflake and my extra ghosties out of here. So let's do the big ghost. I'm not going to do all three of them, but I did want to show this. This Happy Haunting set is well loved. I think this might be one of the very first Lawn Fawn Halloween sets. I love it still. Okay. Wow, I need to put some new paper in here. Let's flip it over so we can see better. Actually, let's just take it out. So I'm going to put my ghost right here. And what I did, so I have all this post-it tape I used earlier. I'm actually just going to take a piece of it. I usually, I have scraps of this everywhere because I use it to hold down dies with die cutting. And I'm not even going to do anything super fancy. I'm just going to die cut up or die cut. How about cut out a little shape? Hopefully this fits. And we are going to... Oh, that one's too small. That would have fit the big, the uh, small ghosts. Let's make it a little bigger. And we are just going to simply cover up its face. So we've created a mask. Now you're going to have to use a stays on ink for this because on vellum regular ink won't dry. That's why I usually stamp and emboss, but I'm so I've had these stays on inks forever. I have refills and I've been using them a ton lately, but they come in super handy. So then we're going to ink up our ghost, leaving that mask in place. And then to stamp it, I'm simply going to take my mask off and stamp my ghost. And there we go. So we have a great little outline. So then all we really need to do, I'll, I'd usually clean that right away, but I'll clean it later. 
we are going to take one of those cute little faces. Linda, thank you. She says the faces look better than the originals. I'm calling them updated ghosts. We're just updating the originals with some cute little faces. So I'm going to take that same face that I did earlier and line it up in my Misty. And then this time we're just going to use our stays on ink in black. You could do it in white if you wanted to, but I think black makes the face show up so much better. And there's its face. How cute is that? So I know it's really super simple, but this was one of my favorite things that I did for this card because I thought the updated faces were really fun. All right. We're going to save that because I want to die cut that later. I'm going to move him out of the way. And I'm going to show you all of the pieces that I'm going to use to decorate. So um, I've got some little pumpkins here. These are from Pick of the Patch. What is awesome is this will work for fall or Halloween. I better see if I have any questions real quick. <laughs> the Ink and Garden Spot says she loves the ghost with the grumpy eyes. Me too. And Rebecca, I have those faces and I forget to use them a lot too. And Lawn Fawn does such a great idea. Idea. They have such a great assortment of faces for all the different occasions, so I thought it was fun. So I've got some pumpkins. I left two of the pumpkins as is. I made one of them into a jack-o'-lantern. Then I thought our big ghost needed a little witch hat, so that little witch hat is from Spooktacular, which is right here. So that's going to be the witch hat from there. And then I knew I forgot to do this, but the tombstone, I need to take a black pen and outline those, so we'll do that here in a second. That is from this stamp set as well as the little moon. On the, in the description box here on YouTube, I've listed out the colors for these. This is the only thing I colored in the hat for this card, so I did list those out. Then we've got a couple of cute little die cut, stamped and die cut bats. This is from Happy Haunting. So this is from that same stamp set as some of the ghosts. And these bats have had gotten much love from me too. I love them. So that's where our little bats are from. And then we have a cute little die cut spider web I think we're going to tuck right here. And a little spider and this, these die cuts are from the Cute Cobweb, which I love. You also get a little bit bigger spider in it too, but I have used this spider web so many times. This is not new either. Um, and it's a much loved Halloween set. Oh, I lost one of my little ghosties. Come back here. That was about bad. I'd been looking for him. And then we have the Spooky Fence Border, which is awesome because there are other fence borders from Lawn Fawn, but you definitely need a spooky one for this. So we are going to be tucking this kind of down here along the bottom edge. I think we will start with that. I kind of wish I hadn't glued that down, come to think of it, but I did. So there's that. We need to figure out how I want to adhere that. Oh, kind of like that. So let's put a little glue on. I may have to die cut another border to cover that up. Is that about enough? So we were we will obviously be trimming off a little bit of this. Actually, I kind of like it like that. And we're just going to glue that down in place. And then I will trim the excess off here in a minute. I'm going to fiddle with these pieces real quick. <laughs> You're getting to see my real time, like I don't always know exactly how everything is going to go. I want some things I think kind of in front and some behind. Let's get a black pen and fix 
that real quick. I did no line coloring here, so you can kind of still see the outline. I needed to concentrate while writing. <laughs> oh, thank you, Alana. That's so nice of you. Oh, Tina, that's a great idea. She says a little piecing together in the fence could be a cute train track. That's a really awesome idea. All right. I kind of think I want to tuck, I can't decide. Don't really know that I want it to completely hidden. I think we're gonna put the pumpkin back behind before this glue completely dries, yeah. For sure, because I want one of my little ghosts kind of to be coming out of here. I'm really kind of mad at myself for adding that holographic paper already, but that's okay. We're just going to die cut another piece and no one will know, except for all of us. <laughs> so I just really want the base of my um, crystal ball to be decorative. And then, yep. And because I'm hiding him, I am going to put a little liquid glue, although we're not going to do that for any of the other ghosts right there because I'm hiding that and then let's move all this these guys out of the way for a minute let's shut this and very carefully snip off anything hanging off the edge And then I will see if I have any questions or anything before I move on. There, much better. Now let's glue. I am going to glue that little piece though. Let me grab something. All right. There we go. And I'm going to just put a little glue over here. Sorry, guys. This is a little bit of the fussy part of this. Also, I'm going to grab that holographic paper real quick. And it is lawn fawn. I'm going to show you. Oh, whoa. Sorry, guys. I blinded you all with the holographic paper. I am going to re-die cut that top one and just layer another one on top. Since I accidentally should have waited. And I also think this little handle, we're gonna die cut that from holographic paper too and we'll see if we like it. That's the plan so far. Alrighty. Got some new die cuts. So, let's just move that for a second. And I have a dog that's crying because he thinks I've left him. I locked him out. It is a little mini operation. <laughs> Who else does operations on their cards? Not just me, I hope. You guys are seeing the behind the scenes. You're welcome, Julie. It is. Yeah, I, this is beautiful holographic paper. So we're just going to do this because that hides all of that ugly right there. And I'm going to use my favorite little tweezers here to help hold that down. <laughs> 
Annie loves card making, says she misses my dog snoring in the background. I must be better at hiding it because I promise he is still um, snoring in the background all the time. And I'm going to let him in so he stops crying because that's not a fun sound to listen to for anyone. Come on. Come on. Lay down. He's just so used to uh, being my crafting friend, he doesn't know any different. And I'm pretty sure he thinks me talking to the screen is just normal. All right, so I think we're going to do this little holographic handle. I'm going to pop out the arrow because I do think I'll die cut that from another color. But look how fun that is. I think black is what we need to do for that contrasting color. And this does give the handle a little bit more stability as well. Elaine, I did let him in. I am such a uh, sucker for him. He is the most spoiled little guy ever. Oh good, Created by Zoe has her hands up. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so we all have to do our little uh, repairs now and again. Let me move some of this stuff that we don't need. All right, so we have quite a few pieces still. Now I am going to grab, I really, really hope this is going to work. Whoops, let's put it in the right way. I still have this little Xyron sticker maker. I don't use it tons, but it is fantastic for vellum. So we're going to put vellum all over the back of that and our little ghostie our two remaining ghosties to make them stickers Wanda yes thank you yes Donna um, I am going to make the arrow black I'm gonna do that here in just a minute I gotta grab some cardstock So let's peel off that backing paper. I also need to die cut this little highlight too from holographic paper, I think. I think for sure holographic paper. The only problem sometimes with that Xyron sticker maker with a delicate die cut is it'll leave the, it really does feel like, look like a web then, but I just pick it out with my nail. And I wanna put this just kind of up here in the corner. It'll be a little bit hidden, but I think it'll be cute. I'm just gonna rub away any of that. Then I am gonna open this, and let's go ahead and die cut those last couple things I need so I don't forget. Let me grab my snow globe first. Let me also make sure I don't lose any of these dies. Hold on. Keep that extra piece. I'm going to run to my die cutting machine really, really quick. Be right back. All right. So I didn't die cut the whole snow globe. In fact, I probably, if I'd taken my time, could have been a little bit more choosy and not wasted so much, but I'll just save those bigger pieces of cardstock. But I want to use these as the highlight on my little crystal ball. Tina wants to know my fur baby's name so she can say hello. His name is Odin. Odin the Shizu, and he is so spoiled rotten. He is totally a mama's boy, and I love him. <laughs> That's all there is to it. There's a reason he's spoiled. It's because I can't tell him no. He's really good. He's a good boy. There is a spider. I'm going to add it here in just a minute, Elaine. Let me see. Okay, if I've missed anything, let me know. Oh, did you guys hear him crying? I'm sorry. He, 
was wanting in. I always kind of start the live stream with him out doing something else and he's okay for a little bit but he's just used to being my crafting friend. I didn't get this pulled off very good. All right, I have not attached this yet. Oh, Odin, everyone's telling you hi. We're gonna peel off our big ghost and I want him to kind of look like he's, or she, whatever, is coming up kind of from these pumpkins when it's open. Oh, I love it. I was hoping it was gonna look cute. And then we're gonna put a little witch hat here. Now some of this won't be seen, but that's totally fine. Oh my gosh, I'm loving it. Now something I was thinking about and I didn't do, so I'm gonna do it now, is I've got some like little bats and stuff that we're gonna be adding out around. I don't wanna lose any of the things I still have to add. So I'm going to grab these little teeny tiny bats and an acrylic block and my trusty black ink that doesn't let me down since I'm not using my Misty. But I'm thinking we need some bats inside of here too when this opens. And I'm going to stamp these off on a scrap piece of paper first. Yep, that works. Hello everyone just joining us. And we're going to do kind of like that. Oh, yes. I love it. Hello, Serena. Wow, it seems like we kind of had a whole bunch of people come in here really quick. Oh, how fun. Daisy Bill said she cut some spider webs in holographic and couldn't stop. Oh, my gosh. I love that idea. I bet they are beautiful. Annie Loves Card Making says pups are the best crafting partner Crafting Partners, hers is Addie. Oh, I love it. MJ Chang, you are not late. We're so glad you're here. Okay, so there's kind of what it's going to look like when it's open. Obviously, it'll be kind of be hidden. I feel like, I wonder if this is dangerous, but what do you guys think about, I think I should add some more bats that slide away. We're going to do it. I really probably would have done this normally before I assembled, but I think we'll be fine, actually. Let's move these on the acrylic block just a little bit. I'm going to move away from my project so I don't mess it up. I'm putting them clear down here at the bottom so I'm not like over the part that's raised. Yes. Okay. So when we open, they disappear, but we're still going to see some. That just makes that magic iris a little more decorative. Let's add our spider, our little die cut spider. I'm going to trim a little of this off. I think that's about right. So I'm going to put a little glue here. We're getting there. I'm just not a super speedy crafter, I don't think. Oh, Tina says, hi, Odin, from her and Max. Everyone has little crafting friends. I think crafting friends are a necessity. <laughs> Kelly says her daughter's favorite Avenger is Thor. I love it. Okay, so we had talked about getting two puppies and naming them Thor and Loki. <laughs> and it just, we ended up not. And so I saved those names. I think those will be, when I get new, new puppies or more puppies, I'm probably going to be that lady with all the dogs. Um, that's probably what their names will be. We're gonna do a little moon up here and we're gonna have some bats and we have one more little ghosty that I wanna add. So let's just kind of play here with our bats for a minute. These are our little die cut ones. And then I want to make sure 
Oh, my chat stopped. So sorry, I'm going to be way far behind. Hello. Oh, hello from Japan, MJ Chang. So nice to have you here. Yeah, I don't, Kelly, I don't like bats except for Halloween. Oh, yes, bats. I thought you were like, ooh, yuck. <laughs> oh, Daisyville, that's so nice of you. Okay. I am way far behind. I'm so sorry, you guys. All right. I want this guy to kind of be, yes, peeking out here, kind of overlapping the moon, like so. Okay, this was fun. I'm totally in the mood for fall now. How about you guys? Stickles would be awesome. I'm going to tell you why I'm not going to. I have found that when I color with my zigs, sometimes those products change the color of the finished project. Um, I used to do it a lot, and then I would find later on that the color had changed. If I had colored with Copics or colored pencils or something, I probably would have used some stickles because that's a really good idea. All right. It's time for final assembly. Let's put our magic iris in place. So I want some strong adhesive. And do you think I have any idea where I put my, my tape? Oh, you guys, I make such a mess. Oh, here it is, right in front of me. I always laugh because at the craft or math of these live streams, I mean, I'm kind of, I think just in general, we're all messy when we craft, but man, I just make such a mess trying to do this live when normally I'd probably kind of, I say I'd pick up as I go, but it, it just doesn't seem like it's this bad, but it probably is. So I'm putting adhesive on those and then we're going to grab some foam adhesive. I'm just going to use these foam adhesive squares along the base so that everything is nice and flush. Odin, what are you doing? Come here. Crafter math. Yes, that's what it's going to be from now on is crafter math. You guys know it's true where the floor has like little backing paper and scraps and die cut stuff all over it and there's glitter everywhere. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy to me how it can get so bad so fast. So we have all of our backing paper off. We have our magic iris open so we can line it up. And we are just going to pop it in place like so. And then the magic. How much fun is that? Okay, I do need to die cut that arrow. Oh, my little spider web. It might be in the way a bit. Let me grab my die and some black cardstock. Be right back. Because of course it's not out. This is why my room looks so bad. It's because I forgot to get some things out. I'm also going to tell you I'm pretty sure in that supply list I listed the wrong holographic paper. So I will fix that as soon as the live stream is over. And then I will have a blog post with photos of the finished card that comes out tomorrow morning. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you want to see some photos and all of that good stuff. All right, let's put our little arrow in here. This is kind of fussy, all these little things, but I think all of these little finishing details just make the card. 
Now I do think it would be really cute. I did not do this, but maybe even to tuck like some little leaves or something down here. I may still do that later on. I don't know. It has a lot going on, so it probably doesn't need it. Oh, I do know my last thing I was going to add. I even have them out. I did get these out. I feel like we need to finish with finish with some little stars. Don't you guys think we need to? Jessica says, oh, it's scrolling too fast. My dinner table looks like a messy craft store. Yes, I love it. DK Sherby, oh, good. I'm so glad you're here now. Yes, you can definitely check out the replay. Annie loves card making. It is organized. I am pretty organized, but it is, it's a mess right now. In fact, it drives me a little crazy because I, when I can't find things, I don't do so good. All right, we need little stars everywhere, I think. So we are going to just go ahead and we'll start with that. And we're going to put our little confetti stars. I just think this adds to the overall spooky appeal. I call this um, cute spooky. I like cute spooky. And I think the little silver picks up the holographic paper really well, which I love. We'll see if we need to add more here in a minute. All right, tell me if I've missed any little glue spots. I know you guys have better eyes than I do here, maybe. All right, that looks pretty good. I don't wanna go too crazy. And like I said, I may tuck a couple of little leaves down here near the base. I don't know, we'll see. But here is that little magic iris in real time. I might need to glue that spider down a little better. Isn't that fun? I just think it's so much fun to play with this. And the more times you open and close it, the better. And also, um, I know someone mentioned this in the comments earlier, the thicker your cardstock for your handle, the more durable it's going to be. So definitely keep that in mind too. So that is our Magic Iris Halloween card. Let me see. Yes, stars. Okay, I'm going to see if I have, um, Annie loves card making, wants to know how they're sticking to my tool. Um, they just, I don't know why that end picks them up. There's really, I mean, it's kind of dirty. Maybe that's why it's not really used for that. The sticky end is, but when I'm doing these little stars, I usually just pick them up with that and they pick up for the most part. All right, let me flip my camera around real quick. Hello, everybody, I'm back. Rachel says she likes cute spooky. Kelly says she likes cute spooky. DK Sherby says whimsy cute. I love that. Oh, thank you, guys. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like the Halloween card. So much fun. Let's see if I have any questions. If you guys have anything you want to know, you can ask away or even if there's something not about this card, about crafting. Oh, Cheryl, darn. You can catch the replay. Oh, thanks, Val. Julie likes the live sessions non-edited, yes. Oh, good. Thank you, guys. So Kelly says she placed a big order from Simon Says Stamp from the last live. Oh, good. Fun. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. I appreciate it. Oh, want to see Odin? Odin, do you want to say hi? Where did you go? Oh, you're right here. Come here. Come say hi to everybody. Oh. Hey, look at the camera. Look up here. Show them your cute face. Show them how cute you are. Yes, I love you. <laughs> All right. 
Good boy. <sighs> Um, let's see. Jesse wants to know if I will do more night lives. Yes. Um, once a month, I do the last Monday of the month, I do a night live. And I will probably do some here and there, just kind of depending on how it works. Um, Stamp and Stitch wants to know how you get started crafting again after maybe a long break. And I get that. Um, I would say copy something you like. This sometimes just trying to think of your own idea and is overwhelming and it makes it kind of not fun. So I have found that in the past if that happens to me, I will copy an idea or part of an idea of something I like, somebody else's creation and that gets the creative juices flowing. So that's probably one of my favorite tips for kind of getting started again. <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, Annie Loves Card Making wants to know if I love the Barely Glue. I do. I really, really like it. Oh, Alana wants to know if I do too, and I do. Oh, DK Sherby, thank you. She likes my eye makeup. This is my, it's been on all day, and I can tell I'm all glowy. <laughs> um, which colored cardstock did I use? Um, Simon Says Stamp Slate Gray is what I used here. Um, if you're wanting to know in general, I use an assortment from different places, so let me know if you if I didn't answer that right. Um, Shannon, you're very welcome. Thank you guys. Yes, he's cute. He's so honored. He looks like like a little Ewok or Chewbacca. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Um, my next live will be next Friday at 9 a.m. Yeah, in the Ink and Garden spot. He looks like an Ewok. Yes, he does. <laughs> Okay, let me see. Any other question? <laughs> yes, he smiled for the camera. Let me see. Um, lots of questions about the Barely Art Glue. I do love it. Um, if you haven't caught one of my previous lives, I know I have a lot of new people, and welcome. Thank you guys so much. Um, I mentioned my friend Lori Willison had it, has had it for months and months, and she's like, you need to try it, you need to try it. I'm like, no, I'm good, I'm good. And so then I finally got it, and um, I'm hooked. I love it. I think it's great. Um, it's the little things in card making. I did have um, mystery boxes, and they literally sold in 20 minutes. Um, Holly Smith has a great suggestion for getting started after a break. Um, going through your supplies sometimes will help, and I agree with that. Sometimes just organizing or going through and picking out something that was your favorite that you bought and either you've already used and you love or something you haven't ever used. That's always a really um, good idea. Oh, thank you, Regina. That is so nice of you. Um, Cindy, there is somewhat of a schedule. To know when I'm going live, I go live every Friday morning at 9 a.m. I know I did it to this week. Um, I put on my community page on YouTube earlier this week that I was changing it because I had an appointment I couldn't miss today, and so I switched it to this evening. I go live every Friday morning at 9 a.m., and the last Monday of the month, I go live at 7 p.m. So there's generally about five lives a month. And if you click the notification bell here on YouTube, it should notify you. I know a lot of you might subscribe, and I didn't know this for a long time, but you have to click that bell. That's how you get notified when your favorite channels go live or have new videos and anything like that. So hopefully that helps. Um, Jesse B wants to know what I do with my cards. I mail them to friends and family. And I mail a lot of them to Mail It Monday. Halloween cards are probably all going. I have a bunch because I ha made a bunch last year. I think I had some from the year before. And those are all, all going to get mailed in October for Mail It Monday. Um, DK Sherby has another great suggestion for getting started. She said, do something easy and colorful to start out. I love that. That is a fantastic suggestion. You're so welcome, Terry. 
Let's see. Um, and also, I will always put something on my community tab on the YouTube channel just to kind of let you know when a new video is coming. I will try to be better about that and make sure I do that. Um, is it Zara? I feel like I've asked this before and I forgot. Does Lawn Vaughn have a card kit or stamp subscription? No, they don't. Um, not currently. Regina, you are so welcome. Jennifer Kinney, hello! Lori gets me to buy lots of stuff. <laughs> yes, she sure does. How are you, friend? Not glowy, youthful glow. Jessica, thank you. That's very nice of you. All right. The Ink and Garden Spot says she's glad I switched. Yes, Cindy, Central Time. I'm so sorry. Yes. Um, Any time I give you is Central Time. Um, Tina Pierce Tinney, I am not doing a Halloween series. However, I will have a lot of Halloween cards. What is Mail It Monday? Bonnie wants to know. Um, in the description box underneath the video here on YouTube, I have a link. You can sign up. I pick 10 people from that list every week to mail one of my cards to. Uh, it's just happy mail. I find that I have so many cards. I make a lot of cards for work, so I have more than I can send to friends and family. So I mail out 10 cards a week to some of you guys. So you just sign up, you put your address in the um, Google document, can't think, the Google document, Lori Craig actually set it up for me, and I simply randomly choose people. I don't even really, uh, <laughs> I just kind of scroll through. I generally try to look and see if people specifically want birthday and I have birthday cards, I'll send those. Um, if it's seasonal, I'll try to send seasonal cards. It really just depends. So I know for October and December, I already have two bins full of cards actually and for November as well like fall themed cards I have two bins full of cards and that's probably what I'll be sending during those two months for the majority anyway so that is what mail it Monday is there is a link to that um Helena wants to know if I mail outside the U.S. for mail it Monday yes I do I sure do Stamps and Sti Stitch says 2020 took it out of her. Oh, good. The suggestions have been wonderful. That's so great. Thank you, everyone, for um, giving your suggestions because that is wonderful. Donna wants to remind everybody, and so do I, to hit the like button. Thank you. Um, oh, Glinda wanted to know what Mail It Monday was, too, so I hope I answered that. Let's see. I think, can you guys... Tell me, um, if you already have clicked the um, notify button here on YouTube, if I post something on the community tab, do you get a notification that I have done that? Um, I'm just curious. Let's see. <laughs> DK Sherby says, we could all probably write a tearjerker country and western song about 2020. <laughs> I love it. That's so funny. Sandy said she... Um, she did get some uh, Mail It Monday card. Oh, that's so awesome. Yes, I remember mailing you one. I don't remember all of them. I'm going to tell you guys, too. I'm doing my best, but I will not get to everyone, at least not this year. I have almost 2,000 people signed up. I've sent out a lot of cards, but there I just randomly choose. Let's see. Okay, Linda says she gets notified. Thank you for letting me know. I appreciate it. Um, it's the little things in card making says she gets an email. I do too. I just wanted to make sure it's working. I always worry about that. Terry says no. Uh, Marianne says no. Okay, um, so Susie says she always gets notifications. I and Tina says not sure, but she gets reminders for my lives. So I get some yeses and some nos. Hmm. Okay, if, can you tell me if you only get notified when I have updated, like either done a video or a live, are you just subscribed or have you hit the notification bell? I'm just curious. Hmm. I wish I could tell you guys. I just do not know. Um, Maximus Fame 537 says, got my wife a... Uh, Cricut machine for Christmas and haven't used it. Do you, I don't have any. 
Cricut videos. I'm sorry, I don't have one of those machines. Kimberly says she gets a, rem a reminder, can't talk, for lives but not anything else. Hmm, darn it. Video only. Well, I will look into it, you guys. I will find out what you need to do because I thought that if I posted on there that you would get a notification and maybe that would help kind of let you guys know what's coming because I try to post, oh, I'm really shiny, um, that kind of will let you know if there's a good sale. I try to post that. Um, lives coming up, I posted that I changed the, the time for the live. So I really want to make sure that um, that is going out to you. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to just kind of see if I have any last minute questions. Um, and then I will probably sign off and let you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, Patty. She said she missed it, but watch, we'll watch the replay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Linda says she's a subscriber and gets notified for all of the videos. Okay, good. And created by Zoe says she, she sees that she is not on full notifications, only partial. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to look and try to find answers to all of this. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Oh, Mindy Effler wants to know if I can explain what Stamp Timber is. Yes. Stamp Timber is something that Simon Says Stamp started, I believe this is year 11. Um, it is a month full of inspiration. It's um, it's Stamp Timber, so it's focus on stamps. They have a big release of their products on September 1st um, that will go live at midnight. And that will be like a lot of really fun product. It will be stuff that will be restocked. In addition, and then there's a month long party. We have lots of inspiration, blog hops, lots of good stuff. What a lot of people really look forward to is the, there's almost daily um, exclusive limited edition collaboration sets with our favorite stamp company. So Lawn Fawn. Lawn Fawn always participates. They always have an exclusive. And it's only available while supplies last. So they generally, they all sell out eventually. They only get a limited amount of them and they are not brought back. But there's inspiration every day for that. So there's a lot of excitement about all the exclusives. Tim does a fantastic exclusive every um, stamp timber. That's always super popular. All of them are popular. Um, but all your favorite designers usually do collaborations. So almost every day there'll be one. So there's going to be that. And like I said, just lots and lots of inspiration and just celebrating um, our love of stamping. So it's it's really, really fun. And I think it's just um, a great way to just kind of um, have fun in the stamping community, I guess. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. I hope I answered your questions. Love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And we will see you next week for another live. Bye. The supplies used in today's video are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another project that you might be interested in. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to never miss a new live video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.